Bonjour Gemini and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Claude here. Today I'm going to be doing a Your Monthly Tower reading for the month of June. So as per usual, I have split my deck into three piles. We have the Major Arcana here for the energy for the month. Here we have the Court cards to see which Court card you should embody this month and the Minor Arcana to delve into the message. So I hope you are all doing well. Please remember those are general readings. They will not resonate with everybody. So just take what resonates and drop the rest. If you know you resonate better with your Moon, Venus or Rising signs, you may want to check those readings out too. Now what do we have for my Gemini querents? What's the energy for the month of June? Your energy for the month is the chariot. Now obviously I will delve into the message when I've got all the cards out. If you're wondering what deck I'm using, I'm using the one JJ Swift, Swiss sorry, by um, Vincent Petitchi, and there would be a link for it in the description box below. It's a really nice deck. So how should they show up this month? Show us the correct court cards for them, please. So you are advised to embody the Queen of Wands energy. Here. And let's delve into your message. That's about right. So we begin your reading with the Seven of Wands. Well, you've got two seven next to each other. Then you have the Two of Wands and the Eight of Wands. Okay, we have a lot of wand energy here. There's a lot of fire for you next month. Supporting your Seven of Wands, you've got the Two of Cups. Supporting the Two of Wands, you have the Two of Swords, okay, so two twos, three twos, gee, okay. And the another seven, okay, the Seven of Swords under the Eight of Wands. Okay, so already I can tell you, you may be seeing number seven or number two a lot, and they, you know, these are synchronicities and signs, um, because you've got three number seven and three number twos, which... I don't think I've seen this in a very long time actually in a reading. That's interesting in itself. And I will delve in this in a minute. Let's talk about your main energy first. So you have the chariot. Now I talked about number seven. Now seven is a very spiritual number and it's a, a number of um, experience. And from this experience, you know, where you self-analyze, self-evaluate, you gain confidence. The chariot is a card of confidence. It's a card of having a goal in sight and taking on any challenge that comes your way and overcoming, overcoming them, knowing that you have the determination to do so. And it's also going straight forward. The charioteer is not someone who's going to take a detour. This is sheer determination with a goal in sight and being successful. There is a big aspect of success and victory with, with this card, but it's depending on you taking action and pushing forward. It's not necessarily an easy victory but you're going to learn so much um, on this path and it will be worth it. It really is, you know, the victory that you will savor. And you're being advised to embody the Queen of Wands this month. Now again, you have free will. I will never presume to tell you how to live your life, okay, just so we're clear. Um, but this is the advice. Now, Queen, Queens, generally speaking, are receptive energy, like the Yin energy, as opposed to um, a king who's an action taker and they represent patience and understanding they rule behind their husbands it's that kind of energy they're very powerful um, but they can influence rather than uh, being powerful through taking action and wands is the suit of fire so it's passion desire what your heart and soul truly yearn for it's also your spirit you know your willpower to see something done something that really matters to you and i mean you have one two, three, four cards 
out of seven cards to do with wands. So it really shows that what we're dealing with in June is something that really matters to you, is very important to you. Um, and you may have to, you know, really put your feet down put, and stand your ground and um, fight for what you believe in, for, for a situation, relationship, but this is going to be worth it. You know, there's success at the end of it with the chariot, definitely. So the Queen of Wands is someone who is very charismatic. Um, I always say she has a big stick, but she doesn't need to use it because she's got that inner glow, that inner confidence. She knows that she can attract to herself what she needs. And she's a go-getter, but that's the way she goes about doing things. She attracts things rather than uh, run after them, is what I'm trying to say. There's a big difference between, for instance, the Knight of Wands, which is going to go for it no matter what, and the Queen who has the experience, the patience, and understands that actively seeking something out is not always the same, the right way to do something, that you can actually attract it to yourself. So we begin with the Seven of Wands, supported by the Two of Cups. So the Sevens, as I said to you, is experience, confidence that stems from it. And the Seven of Wands represents standing your ground, not giving up. This is the Persist card. This is you defending um, a partnership with the Two of Cups, because the Twos are um, decisions, um, polarities, but also relationships. And because the Cups represent the emotional realm, so, you know, emotions and feelings, they can represent relationships. So this could be you defending um, a relationship or a partnership. It does not have to be romantic. It could be a business partnership. It could be a family relationship, a relationship with a co-worker, whatever the case may be. Um, it could also be you finding the strength from this relationship to stand your ground for something that really, really matters to you. Um, but the message is definitely... Uh, do not give up, persist, and uh, rely on the, upon this relationship for the strength that you need, if that's the case for you, or defend this partnership, whatever the case may be. Take what resonates, because it could be read both ways. And then we have the Two of Wands, with the Two of Swords. Now, this is a really interesting combination, because as I explained to you, the Two represents uh, duality, polarities, and decisions. The Two of Wands represents a crossroad, as you can see from the crossed wands. And it represents looking at path A and path B, or 1A, 1B, whatever you want to call it, and looking at the kind of experiences you would be provided. Because you're going to get to your destination, whether you go left or right. But this is choosing the um, best path for you, the one that's going to have the most exciting um, opportunities and experiences for you. And so you're at this crossroad, and the Two of Swords represents not making a decision. Because you see, the swords, they're protecting something here. You see this flower that's blooming? These are encapsulating the flowers. The Two of Swords represents uh, not making a decision, because you're protecting something, something within yourself, maybe an idea, because the swords represent the mental realm. It represents really a, a block. Um, you not making a decision, it's a mental block. It could also be because you believe you don't have all of the elements or the facts in order to move forward. That may be the case. So you're either protecting something or you feel you don't have enough clarity or not all the facts in order to um, choose whether you're going to go left or right at this crossroad. But this is going to change very swiftly because you've got the eight of Wands. It's supported by the Seven of Swords. So the Eight of Wands, Eight represents advancement and with the fire energy this is fast advancement. So the Eight of Wands represents news coming your way. So it could be text, phone calls, emails, obviously letters. It could also be someone coming your way or you could be going towards someone or um, towards something as the charioteer. And this is because there's going to be a breakthrough. The Seven, again, as I said, it's experience. It's the confidence that stems from it. The Seven of Swords, to do with the mental realm, really represents a focused and determined attitude. It represents doing what it takes to get the job done. Now, in the standard Rider-Waite-Smith, it's represented by a man at night 
um, stealing the swords away from a camp. Um, now some argue that it's to do with deceptions and thief and stuff like that. To me it's work smarter not harder. This is a man who says, well, I'm going to take your weapons away because it means tomorrow I don't have to fight you. You see what I'm saying? So there's going to be a, a, a breakthrough, um, a determination um, that's going to come with this news that's going to show you the right way forward. Because you see, to me, it, it's all very, very clear. You know, defending your standpoint with the support of someone you know, you have a goal in mind and you're defending it, or you're defending a relationship, a partnership, take what resonates. You get to a crossroad, you're looking at both ways, you don't know which way to go, you don't feel you're ready, or you don't feel you've got all the facts, but some news comes, comes your way, which gives you the determination to then embody this charity energy, um, and going for it, really. You're going to attract this movement forward as the Queen of Wands. You know, you need to know that you've got this, you need to have this inner confidence um, that this is going to come to you. But I do see the situation um, unlocking itself and you moving forward fast. So I'm going to close out your reading with a final message. Can we have a final message for my Gemini Quarants, please? This card here. The Four of Swords. So four is strong foundation and um, stability. So this represents mental stability. Once you have pierced through, once you have got that message, whatever advancement this Eight of Wands represents for you, you're going to have this determination, this sharp focus, which is going to bring you the mental stability that you need to see things through. So um, I think that's a very positive outcome for you. I hope you've enjoyed your journey for the cards with me. If the message helped you in any ways, do let me know in the comment box below. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for stopping by. I really appreciate your time as always. Um, I wish you a wonderful month, full of passion and energy, and um, I'll see you again very soon. Until next time, au revoir.